Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is David and you can probably guess from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my 2013 Nissan Juke Nismo and the three major things that I hate about this car after owning it for about the last four to five months. So whether you're interested in buying your own Nissan Juke Nismo, whether you're an owner and you clicked on this video to see what other people think about the car, or you just wanted to learn more about this sporty crossover, stay tuned and let me explain why I really hate these three things about the Nissan Juke Nismo. The first thing I hate about the Nissan Juke Nismo is the size of the fuel tank and the fuel economy estimates. If you consider against an ST3, which at the time of buying this car was around the same price for the same year, it has a 55 litre fuel tank, whereas the Nissan Juke Nismo only has a 46 litre fuel tank. Around town you get around 31 miles per gallon, so theoretically it should give you an estimated range of somewhere between 300 and 320 miles. However, any time I fill up the car, I always get an estimate of around 250 to 260 miles. Even when you're on the motorway, you'll get about 36 to 40 miles per gallon, which is slightly better, but I always fill them at the petrol station filling up the car based on these estimates and being cautious that I don't run out of fuel. So the second thing that I absolutely hate about my 2013 Nissan Juke Nismo actually requires me to be in the cabin to be able to explain this. What I'm gonna do is actually switch over to my GoPro so you can see a point of view of exactly what I'm talking about. The first thing is the sat nav. And although on here it doesn't look too bad, when you start zooming in and out, you'll see just how long it actually takes for the system to get to the point where you want it to be. Granted, the car is 13 years old, but if I zoom back in, just look how long that takes you. That's not even the worst thing about this sat-nav. And to anyone that's gonna be looking at buying a Nissan Juke Nismo like this one, I'd actually recommend that you buy an aftermarket head unit, which is something that's on my list. And granted, I've only owned this car for about four months now, so I'm still fairly new to the car, but it's the first thing that's gonna go because I've been on road trips, visiting friends, and by following this sat-nav instead of Google Maps or Waze, it's taken me on some dirt tracks where only tractors and four by four should go. And we actually managed to pull off some of the plastic underneath the car because we're going up one of these dirt tracks. We were going over some of the bumps and it literally just tore it away from underneath us, even though we were being so careful. But it's just lost all credibility when I'm using this sat nav. So anywhere we go, we actually put Google Maps on our phone to make sure that the maps on the car is taking us the correct route to wherever we're trying to travel to. So the other thing about this entertainment screen, if you look from my point of view, while I'm driving here and I look over, you can just see the amount of glare based on the angle of the screen. What's worse is if I put it into reverse now and I'm trying to look behind me, this is pretty accurate to what I'm actually seeing within the car now. I can barely see this half of the screen here of what is behind me. Luckily, I'm in a car park, so there is nothing there. But if you imagine you're trying to pull into a tight space or in your parking lot or something like that, and you really need to be able to see what's behind you and your mirrors just aren't cutting it, you are not gonna be able to use this camera very effectively. So again, I don't know if that is down to the entertainment screen and just the angle of it and the glare, or if it's a mixture of the reversing camera as well. But it's something that I really, really hate about this screen and the reversing camera in general. So the third thing that I really dislike about the Nissan Juke Nismo is actually, again, in the interior. It's nothing to do with the styling of the car, anything about the lights, nothing like that. Again, it's the build quality of the interior in two areas specifically. So again, I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro to actually show you exactly what I mean. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the gear shifter. From a visual point of view, it's very nice. Here, you've got Nismo branding there on the other side. But what I found is even in neutral, there is a huge amount of play backwards and forwards, and I'm not pushing it to the side at all. I'm literally just shaking it, and you can see how much give there is in the shifter. The same thing, if I put the clutch down and move it into first, you can see the amount of play in the shifter there. Same thing in second gear. As you go through all the gears, it's the same thing. 
And I don't know if that's just on my car or if that's common across all Nissan Juke Nismos. So if you do own one of these cars, I'd love to actually see, is that something you also experience on yours? And not moving too far away from the shifter, the second issue, and that is the handbrake. So what I've found is actually the space between the handbrake and the passenger bolster here is very, very close. And what you'll find is when you put the handbrake down, your hand is gonna hit this side bolster. And to actually be able to put the handbrake all the way down, what I'm having to do is put my hand flat to try get into the gap here. Same thing if I'm trying to put it back up, I have to get into this gap and then pull up like that. And it doesn't stop there because actually, if you're on any sort of incline when you stop the car and you try to bring the handbrake up, you're gonna to have to crank this handbrake all the way because what I've found is even when I've tried to pull it up and it's about 80 to 90% of the way, the car will just literally roll back. And it's happened on the road outside of our house. It's not very steep by any means. And I put it again, if I just give a demonstration to about here. And what I found is the car is literally rolling backwards. So you have to give it that extra little pull to get it fully up to be able to keep the car in place. And again, I don't know if that's common on all Nissan Duke Nismos or just mine. So again, leave a comment to say, is that something you've experienced in yours if you own a Nissan Duke Nismo? Or is there something I need to get checked out here? But it's two very, very interesting things I would say that you would expect is two of the things you're interacting with most in a car apart from the steering wheel. And they both cause either issue or just aren't up to the build quality you expect. And I know this car is 10 years old and it's done 56,000 miles, but any other car that I've owned, I've not had this issue at all. So again, let me know if that's a common issue with these cars. So there you have it. The three things I absolutely hate about my 2013 Nissan Duke Nismo, but it's not all bad. If you click somewhere up here, you'll be able to see the five things that I love about my 2013 Nissan Duke Nismo. If you have made it to the end of the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment on either the things you love or hate about the car, if you own one yourself, or the things you'd like to see in a future video about the Nissan Duke Nismo. Until the next one, it's goodbye for now.